Good afternoon. I think we are going to get started. I know people are still joining. Um, I want to say thank you for joining us today. This is the second annual presentation of the Sierra Nevada Phillips Award for Women in Water Resource Sciences. My name is Louise Conrad. I serve as the Department of Water Resources Lead Scientist, and I am very excited for this event today because we are growing a tradition here at Department of Water Resources for an award that's devoted to science leadership that have been that has been provided by women specifically. So um, I'm going to ask that, yes, thank you, Sabrina. We are uh, on the agenda slide here. And I wanna just share with you what we're going, to, how we're gonna proceed with the next hour or so so that you know what to expect. We are going to start with uh, an acknowledgement of the ancestral lands and their history. Um, Cindy Messer, our lead deputy director, is going to speak to the award purpose. And then we'll spend a little time acknowledging the Phillips family history specifically and as it relates to this award, then present the award to Dr. Jan Thompson. And uh, then we have space for some of her colleagues to offer some remarks of appreciation for all of her contributions. So thank you again for joining. Um, Sabrina, let's go to the next slide. So I'm gonna offer this uh, ancestral land acknowledgement. Um, I want to acknowledge we are all standing on ancestral homelands of the indigenous people of California. These are people that have stewarded their land since time immemorial and they still do today. This image that you're seeing here comes from California Native Americans Day, and it shows flags from tribal nations through the state. I know that we're calling in from various parts of the state today. I, however, want to spend a little time acknowledging specifically the Echo Summit area and its ancestral homelands and its ancestral peoples, um, because it will be featured in our agenda, and also the ancestral lands of Sacramento, where I am standing and where DWR leadership is presenting this award from. So first to the Echo Summit area, the Lake Tahoe Basin, which includes the Echo Summit area, um, is the ancestral homelands of the Washishu people, which are now represented by the Washu tribe of Nevada and California. The Washishu tribe was forcibly removed from their villages and camps in and around Lake Tahoe for logging and cattle grazing which disrupted their way of life and their ability to manage their homelands. The Washu tribe of Nevada and California has been able to maintain their role as environmental stewards of the Lake Tahoe Basin through advocacy to protect, respect, and take care of their homelands. The area of Phillips Station, which we will talk about today, was frequently visited by neighboring tribes, including the Miwok and the Nishinan, to procure food such as acorns and other culturally important resources. The Sacramento um, area and the place where the California Natural Resource Agency's headquarters is, which is where I am right now, is within the ancestral homelands of the Nishinan and the Miwok. Wilton Rancheria is the only federally recognized tribe in Sacramento County and represents its Miwok members. Wilton Rancheria regained federal recognition in 2009 after a 50 year struggle since the federal government enacted the Rancheria Act, terminating federal services to tribes based on their Indian status. Sacramento today is of central importance to many Northern California tribes, including the neighboring Maidu to the North and East, the Putwin to the West and the Yokuts to the South as a special gathering place for tribal politics, economy and culture. Thank you for taking the time to appreciate that history with me. And I'm going to transition now to Cindy Messer, our lead deputy director to talk to the award purpose. All right, thank you, Louise. And um, welcome to everyone who's joining us today. I am super excited about this event. Um, it is a special award presentation that not only celebrates Women's History Month, which is of the month of March, but it also recognizes women leaders of today. For DWR, the purpose of this award is to recognize the contributions of women specifically to pushing the boundaries of the sciences for water resource stewardship. 
The science, of course, is essential. And the award is more than that. With it, we also recognize the important contributions of mentorship and capacity building to make way for the next generation of women scientists. We also recognize the efforts towards collaboration and community engagement that catalyze advancements in water resource management for our state. There are so many women to recognize in these areas, and this award is a chance to hold them up as leaders for navigating our water future in California. Last year was the inaugural presentation of the award, and it went to Dale Hoffman Florkey, who is a former lead deputy director for DWR, and who did tremendous a tremendous amount of work expanding the capacity within DWR for science and environmental scientists. And I believe Dale was going to join us today. So I just wanted to give a shout out to her if she is here, um, if she wants to pop on camera and wave, great. If not, don't wanna put anybody on the spot, but um, just definitely wanted to say thank you to Dale for everything that she has done and being uh, willing to uh, be with us. Oh, there she is it, when we were test driving this last year. So hi, Dale. Hi, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, I was, uh, I still am very impressed that, um, and humbled by the award I was given last year. So I'm happy to see that uh, the tradition that just got started is carrying on. So I'm happy to be here today. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks, Dale. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, just very quickly, I want to touch on a little bit about the award, and then I'm going to hand things back over to Louise for a moment. Um, the namesake of the award is Sierra Nevada Phillips, and we have uh, a picture here in the slide of Miss Phillips, who was a pioneering woman that owned and operated a summer resort business at Phillips Station, which is near Echo Summit, Echo Summit in the Sierra Nevada region of California. She operated the business from 1909 until she passed away in 1921. She has passed uh, her 320 acre land parcel down to her daughters, and it's been passed through the matriarchal line of the Phillips family since then. So with that, um, I'll hand it back over to you, Louise, for uh, a little bit more information on the site and what we do there. So. Thank you, Cindy. Um, so. Yes, I wanted to do a little bit more history before we do the award presentation and tell you that there's a really important connection between the Phillips family and DWR science in that the Phillips station is um, one of the part, one of the stations for the DWR annual snow survey. Uh, for decades, the Phillips family, the same family that it was Sierra Nevada Phillips family on the slide you just saw, has granted permission to DWR to collect snow data on their land. And it was established, the snow course was established in 1941. Um, you can see a picture of that first sur snow survey note from March 30th of 1941 um, on the slide here. And it still continues today. Here's a photo taken at that location um, less than a month ago. So, and I believe we have some of the uh, leaders of the snow survey, Frank Frank Gerke, I think you were on the line. So just wanna acknowledge you and your leadership. And and I know that um, that's that that leadership role has transitioned um, recently, but, but thank you so much for your service. And uh, this is such an important part of DWR's work as it informs a um, critical part of our water resources in California. Um, so next slide, please, thank you. Again, before the award presentation, there's more to the history of the Phillips family and why in addition to the connection of the DWR snow survey and, and some of our science work, it's really important and appropriate that this award uh, for women science leaders that we are initiating here at DWR bears the Phillips family name. And that's because of the tradition that Sierra Nevada Phillips started, really still continues, has continued today through her matriarchal line. So a little look into the past here. On the left, you left-hand picture on your screen, you can see Sierra Nevada Phillips right there on the left, 
with her daughter, Alice, and her husband, James Bryson, taken in 1910. Now, Alice was one of two daughters of Vade Phillips, Sierra Nevada Phillips. Um, the first daughter was Mehitable Jane Clark Sickle, Sickles, and her daughter, um, with, and she was a daughter of Sierra Nevada Phillips and her first husband, A.W. Clark. So she's the, Sabrina's cursor's right there. And then um, she's with her son, who was Vade's grandson. Um, there were these, these two sisters, Mehitable and Alice, were 20 years apart. Um, so, so as you can see, Alice is right there. She's a girl and she is in the middle of the photo. And Sierra Nevada Phillips is standing behind her. And the woman on Sierra Nevada Phillips' left and the right-hand side of the photo is her mother, whose name was also Mehitable. Um, they were known, Sierra Nevada Phillips and her family were known for their hospitality and the, the, the way they provided many services to their community, including establishing a post office in 1912, which was named after Vade. So it was called Vade's Post Office and it operated until 1961. Um, I especially want to acknowledge the descendants of Sierra Nevada Phillips that are with us today. Um, I believe that Abby Pearson Phillips is online. So a big hello and thank you to Abby for your support for this award. Abby Pearson Phillips is Sierra Nevada Phillips's great, great granddaughter. And her mother, Carol Pearson, is, is Sierra Nevada Phillips's great granddaughter. So in my recent conversations with Abby, I can just feel how connected she is to her family lineage and the women that came before her. She and Carol are still owners of the land at Phillips Station, and they have been managing that through no shortage of challenges, including a fire in 2019 that burned their home to the ground. Last year at our inaugural presentation of the award, Abby Pearson Phillips was with us in person um, and um, you can see them here with Dale, who you just saw on screen, and me at, at the event that we had. And Abby at the event gave a beautiful speech to her family history, reflecting on the tradition of hospitality, courage in the face of challenge, and community service, and how that all really continues to this day in her family and in her community. Abby is here, but She's not able to speak today because she is prioritizing her mother, Carol, who is ill and serving as her caregiver. And that's really in keeping with the very tradition of their family of taking care of one another and um, caring for the women that came before you. So we are sincerely grateful, admiring and appreciative of the Phillips family women and all they have done for their communities. And it really is a privilege to name this award after their predecessor, Sierra Nevada Phillips. So thank you, Phillips family, and thank you to Sierra Nevada Phillips. Thank you, Abby, for being here. With all of that history in mind, I am going to turn the floor back to Cindy for the presentation of this year's Sierra Nevada Phillips Award for Women in Water Resource Sciences. All right, thank you, Louise. And just quickly, I wanna echo our thanks to both Abby and Carol for just and to your family for partnership and friendship. I know uh, we've spent many years uh, coming to visit you in the winter time. So um, I just wanted to echo our thanks. All right, so now uh, the moment uh, we've been waiting for. So it is truly my pleasure to present this year's award. And the 2024 award recipient is Dr. Jan Thompson, we see on the slide here. And Jan, we would very much welcome you to turn on your camera so we can all see you and celebrate with you in this moment. Um, one thing I do wanna say before I go into my talking points again is I love this picture. Um, when I saw this slide and this picture, it just, it took me right back to the time when we met and we all dressed like this in our field gear and our brightly colored jackets, but this just embodies you, Jan, to me, just out in the forefront, out in the field, just making things happen. And so I love, love, love this picture. Um, all right, so as many of us know, um, Jan is a highly accomplished scientist that has dedicated her career to understanding the food web ecology and estuaries. With most of her work 
uh, taking place in our very own San Francisco estuary. So right here in our backyard. Jan has been a research scientist at the United States Geological Survey for more than 40 years. Take that in for a minute, more than 40 years. And was instrumental in helping us understand the impact of invasive clams on our estuary, which is one of the important factors affecting the ecology of the estuary today. Jan provided leadership for so many scientists, including numerous women. And she did it by leading by example in so many ways. We see Jan on many panels and advisory committees. Some of them are listed here on the slide, um, some very prominent committees and panels. She's been a dedicated contributor to the Interagency Ecological Program, guiding research and collaborations to further understand the San Francisco estuary. Many people have benefited from Jan's leadership, and it was under her guidance that many people launched their careers. And we're going to hear from some of those folks in a minute, but I get to take a couple seconds here just to really say, and from a very personal place, how much I appreciate you, Jan. I remember meeting you very, very early on in my career and just thinking what an amazing and kind and brilliant woman with a sense of humor and a whole lot of patience for those of us who are kind of coming in and just sort of making our way and sort of floundering a little bit on what are we doing here? You know, what should we be doing? Um, you know, where am I going to go from here? And I will say that, you know, even though my career hasn't kept me in the sciences, um, that core love of science and ecology is, is there, it will always be there. And so much of it is really, in my mind, thanks to your mentorship, um, to just showing us the realm of what was possible for a lot of us um, and really giving us a voice. Um, I, I really mean that. I think back to those days and just really listening to your advice, listening to you talk about um, science and just kind of making it very grounded and real. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I, it's so great to see you. And in fact, it's like this amazing reunion. Uh, you all will see that as people start to pop on. Um, so just extremely pleased to be part of this today. Okay, so we do have this award here and we're gonna get it to you ASAP. Um, I would like to read it, uh, what's on it, and I'll do that just because it is a little hard to see from the, the slide, but um, I also really just because it acknowledges so much of what you've done for science, uh, the estuary and women in science. So the, the award says, the California Department of Water Resources recognizes your remarkable achievements in the field of aquatic ecology. With more than 40 years of service as a scientist, You've been at the forefront of reaching a deeper understanding of the food web ecology of estuaries, including the impact of invasive bivalves on the San Francisco estuary. Your work in this area has helped shape the conceptual model of the estuary's food web, which is fundamental to its health and its response to restoration. In addition to your scholarly contributions, you have been an essential mentor for numerous women pursuing careers in the sciences, and you've been exemplary in forging meaningful collaborations across agencies and academia. We are grateful for your scholarship, service, and inspiration for the scientific community of our region. So with that, Jan, um, I want to again say thank you. Oops, thank you so much. And maybe I'll turn the floor over to you to say a few words. Jan, we're you're you're not yet muted. Yes, there you go. There we go. That's the story we of gotcha. my life. <laughs> yeah, um, I was uh, quite surprised and humbled by this award when Louise called me. And um, it is true that I've known an amazing amount of young people as I've worked at the survey and watched them fly. There's no other word for it. I was very happy to be a person who gave them a little nudge every once in a while and then uh, uh, watch them rise quite high. And we just had <laughs> a, a presentation by one of those. So um, 
it is very humbling to be given this award. And I thank DWR and everybody on the video. Thank you, Jan. Well, um, one of my favorite parts is coming next, which is where we get to hear and you get to hear, Jan, from the uh, a number of people that uh, really wanted to express their appreciation and share a bit about their experience uh, with, with you and with the rest of the group here. So I am going to turn it over. We have um, a group of 10 people and I am going to turn it over to Jeffrey Kosef. And um, Jeffrey, please introduce yourself and then hand it over to Lisa after you. After you. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. And uh, thank you for including me. I'm, I'm deeply honored to be part of this. So I'm calling in from Stanford, and in the spirit of acknowledgement, I just want to recognize that Stanford sits on the ancestral land of the Muwekma Ohlone tribe. This land was and continues to be of great importance to the Ohlone people. Consistent with our values of community and inclusion, we have a responsibility to acknowledge, honor, and make visible the university's relationships to Native peoples. I first met Jan when she came to see me with Brian Cole and Fred Nichols at the suggestion of Ralph Chang to talk about clams and San Francisco Bay. We had a great conversation and she hooked me immediately into her world. And soon Steve Monismith and I and our student Kathy O'Ridden were providing consulting help to the USGS team. Needless to say, Jan left that first meeting wearing a very sly smile. And I later learned that Jan had been pushing for a fluid mechanical approach all along and now she was vindicated. It did not take long for us to come to the conclusion that we wanted to be part of this team and not consultants. And soon with Jan and Jim Clune's help, you know, we submitted a proposal to the NSF to look at the physics of clam feeding and turbulent boundary layers. Well, the first proposal was not funded, but we persevered and soon we were up and running. And I see that John Cromaldi is here and he was also a big part of that. Somehow in all of that, Jan decided she wanted to do a PhD at Stanford and committed to become an expert in fluid mechanics. She showed incredible resolve and commitment, essentially starting with the introductory course in fluid mechanics, working her way steadily to the most advanced courses. In doing all of this and her research and keeping up with things at the USGS, Jan demonstrated every attribute that one would expect to see in a recipient of the Sierra Nevada Phillips Award. In addition, she always put others first, always was there to encourage when things were not going as well, almost always was smiling and cheery, and along the way did some awesome science to the benefit of San Francisco Bay. Jan has become a good friend and colleague, a mentor to many other students, as was said before. She also helped my daughter with her project in San Francisco Bay, despite everything else she had going on in her life. So Jan, I salute you today and offer you my warmest congratulations and good wishes for this well-deserved recognition and award. Thank you. So hello, all you fans of Jan. I am Lisa Lucas. I'm a research engineer at the USGS. And I'm going to take just a few minutes to share with you all a few words that based on my more than 30 years of knowing, working with, and learning from Jan, describe her. And I'll start with some of the things you all know about her. First of all, even the folks that don't know Jan personally know that she is the clam expert of San Francisco Bay. Uh, to those who've interacted with Jan a little, it's, I'm sure, quickly obvious that she's incredibly sharp, an integrative thinker, an excellent explainer of complex concepts, and remarkably creative. Now, something many people probably didn't know until Jeff just uh, mentioned it, is that she is a Renaissance woman. She's not only a biologist and ecologist, but she also has a PhD in civil and environmental engineering 
with, as Jeff mentioned, a concentration in environmental fluid mechanics. She has uh, performed groundbreaking work that melds both benthic ecology and fluid dynamics. Now, to those of us who have been lucky enough to work with Jan, I'm sure you'll agree that as a collaborator, she's generous, responsible, reliable, and she delivers. Whether she promised me grazing rate calculations to put into my models or edits on a paper we were working on, she provided them to me without me ever having to ask twice. She consistently prioritizes others and their needs ahead of herself. Further, for those of us who've known Jan as our mentor, we know she's an excellent and patient teacher, as Cindy mentioned. She sincerely cares for us. And she looks out for her, all her colleagues, really, but especially her mentees and junior colleagues. And to me personally, she has been all of those things, but she's also been incredibly supportive through my life's ups and downs these last 33 years. Absolutely integral to my research. Um, and on that note, she was absolutely critical to the papers that I am most proud of in my career. She is one of the key reasons I've loved working at the USGS, and she's been a truly wonderful friend. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Jan, for being my friend, my mentor, my teacher, having my back, being a fabulous collaborator, and being one of those key people in my life who taught me to love science. Congratulations on this heartily deserved honor. And I will now pass the mic to my good friend and colleague, Robin Stewart. Hi, Jan. And hi to many of those people who I haven't seen a, uh, for quite a while and who I love. Oh my goodness, I miss you guys so much. So uh, my name is Robin Stewart. I'm a research scientist who is hired into the USGS National Research Program 25 years ago, almost exactly, by Sam Luoma to work on selenium and food webs in San Francisco Bay. Jan was one of the first people I met. I was purposefully introduced to her as someone that I, as a woman, should meet. So. Janice is a process scientist, so let me explain her mentorship, which I'd like to focus on, of women in water science using a process science theme. Since women have been allowed to engage in science, they have faced singular challenges. I can't share particulars, but recently I reviewed a paper on tool use by a mammal species. The authors illustrated how females utilize tools to access hard prey in a prey limited environment proportionally more than males. Females were responsible for caring for their young and maintaining their health, but due to their body size, they needed to adapt to access the harder prey without damaging their teeth. Because of their size, males, on the other hand, could simply bite through the shells. Since I met Jan 25 years ago, I have watched her help female scientists adapt, thrive, survive the gauntlet that is research science, water research science. Besides being an exceptionally bright and intelligent scientist, Jan was there for women on the very practical side of research, the human side. This side is messy and difficult and often disproportionately affects women. In some cases, she had personal experience that allowed her to provide practical advice, such as how to support an aging, dying, and then parent, and then recover from their loss while maintaining a field research program. 
or how to cope with a partner who had their own research or their own career and was at sea or living across the country. But in areas she did not have direct experience, she has had endless and continues to empathy and wisdom that she could offer, such as making the decision to have a child that you know would disrupt your career or caring for the child while writing a paper or dealing with said child when you were ready to kill them. She knew that many of these messy human responsibilities fell directly on women who were trying to make their way in careers. She always had the time to listen to problems, find real solutions, including career changes, and support us when we just needed to cry because there were no easy answers. And man, she could also kick us in the butt to get us out of our pity party. She helped us find our inner warrior to keep moving forward. Congratulations, Jan. I am so happy for you. You so, so deserve this. Love you. I guess I'm next, right, Robin? <laughs> yep. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> next. Yeah, no worries. I'm sorry. I have allergies. Um, so, uh, Jan, I absolutely love that you're getting this award, as like Robin just said. I think we all agree on this. And before I talk just a little bit about you, I actually want to recognize the California Department of Water Resources for coming up with this wonderful award and introducing all of us who didn't know before to this wonderful woman, Sierra Nevada Phillips. And then, of course, to the women who are now uh, receiving this award, Jan Thompson being the second one. Um, after Dale Hoffman Sorkin, both wonderful choices, in my humble opinion. Uh, I also love, by the way, that this is somewhat in the tradition of another award that's been that's been given for quite a number of years now, uh, the Brown Nichols Award for Science, um, which is named after a Department of Water Resources uh, leader, uh, Randy, Randy Brown, and a USGS science leader, Fred Nichols. So somehow this is all sort of fitting. And now this one is specifically for women, which I love. And it is for uh, acknowledging uh, their contributions to science advancement, collaboration, and mentorship. And of course, Jan, you embody all those three things. You've done all those three things. You're a pro at all those three things. So you richly deserve this award for sure. I think I first heard your name spoken by Alan Jasby, who many of you who've worked in the Bay Delta certainly know and remember. And um, he particularly, and I will never forget this because Alan didn't necessarily speak in glowing terms of lots of people, but he sure did of you. And that was when he had read your dissertation. I don't remember if he was on your committee or what, but he definitely read it. And I remember that he said, this is just the best dissertation I've ever read. And that made a serious impression on me and made me want to meet you, which I then luckily got to do pretty shortly thereafter. And then I got to work with you many years in various ways, uh, collaborate with you. You are a wonderful team player and collaborator, and you've shown this in so many teams that I was fortunate to be on as well. So, so thank you for that. And then, of course, your mentorship of many, many people of all kinds, but women certainly included, uh, and showing us how you can do this and that it's actually possible. And that this, of course, includes me. You've been a great mentor to me and also to many others who are speaking here, who I'm seeing currently on the screen, like Cindy, for example, and whose names I see here. Uh, and so thank you so much for that. Uh, I will also mention one person who I don't think will speak, but uh, she is literally in the office right next to mine here. I'm sitting uh, in the uh, headquarters of the California Water Science Center uh, of the USGS, which is where I am these days. And right next to me sits Michelle Chow, who was part, Jan, of your, I remember that you called it that, brain trust. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, and uh, that, of course, I did remember this when uh, years later, she then applied for a position here at our center as basically one of now my closest deputies, our associate director for science operations. And she's doing great there. So thank you for all this mentorship that you've been providing to so many of us for so many years. And, you know, the people that you've uh, basically raised along the way. <laughs> I don't know that 
I would consider you a mom because I, I mean, my mom, because I've always really seen you as a strong research scientist and collaborator, but you've definitely been a mentor and you basically have lots of daughters. So thank you for that, Jan. And I will now hand it over to, oh, Wim Kimmerer, who I haven't seen in a while. So I love seeing you. Hi, Wim. <laughs> hi, Erica, and hi, Jan. Um, boy, it's it's just a huge pleasure to uh, <clears throat> participate in this um, and and sort of echo all the words I've heard before, but with a few a few different twists here. Um, First of all, I mean, just, just for our interaction. So first of all, my name is Wim Kimmerer and I'm uh, a research scientist at the Estuary and Ocean Science Center of San Francisco State University. And one of the, uh, I, guess, I guess I sort of distinguish what I do from what Jan does uh, by saying, Jan's benthic and I'm pelagic. So I did not get a PhD in fluid dynamics. I just knew who to hang out with. Uh, to, to help me with those things. And, and I knew who to hang out with to help me with allergic benthic interactions in that's Jan. Um, and thank you very, very much for that, Jan. Um, every time we spoke, I learned something. Um, and your knowledge in, of the, essentially the intersection of high, uh, fluid dynamics and, and benthic, uh, but benthic pelagic coupling really uh, was just enormously valuable, um, you know, both in in my development as a scientist and in in the development of the science of the estuary. Um, and uh, you know, so so we sort of occupy uh, overlapping but complementary niches in our science. Um, and I, I I have to say I was extraordinarily impressed when you as as somebody with a master's degree and working on your your benthic uh, uh, work in the USGS, that you you took it upon yourself to go and get a PhD in in, in fluid dynamics. That was at, at Stanford. That was a really incredibly bold and daring move, I thought. And of course, it really it really grew helped to grow you into a an extremely useful scientist in the sense of, of producing work and producing collaborations that 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 pushed the scientific uh, work forward in an extremely uh, useful way. So, and you're a great collaborator, of course, everybody said that already. You're timely, responsive, well, um, well trained and, and knowledgeable, um, and you also have a great BS filter, which is very helpful when dealing with uh, problems of people and problems of science. Um, and apart from our professional interaction, Jan, I it was it was brief, but I really enjoyed visiting you and and Greg in Colorado in Estes Park, um, getting getting tips on where to go hiking in the in the national park there, um, and just just hanging out socially and visiting. Uh, was was really fun, uh, and I, I, one one regret I have is I I never managed to entice you to go flying with me, and and I think it's I, I understand, but I think it's odd given that we both know that skiing is a hell of a lot more dangerous than flying. Uh, I don't have any broken anything as a result of flying. So um, anyway, um, this award is very well deserved. And uh, I'll leave it to others to add more to why that's well, why that's so. But thank you very much, Jan. Go ahead, Sarah. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Pearson, and I'm currently a benthic taxonomist for the Sacramento Delta and the San Joaquin. And um, I met, first met Jan when I was hired at the USGS as a biological science technician working on her benthic team. I was super young. I had just left grad school and I didn't really know what I was doing with my life. But looking back, that was probably one of the most important days in my career. Jan has been an absolute pillar in my career. I owe a lot of my success to her mentorship and her generosity. 
She opened doors for me that I never knew existed and encouraged me to achieve goals that I never even thought were possible. I am forever grateful because I truly believe that I would not be where I am today if it wasn't from her. She cared about my success and my well-being, and I feel like she would have done anything in her power to help me achieve my goals in science. I have never felt anything but goodwill and positivity from her, and she always wanted what was best for me both in my career and my personal life. Something that she taught me that always that still sticks with me today and I think about all the time is that she used to tell us when things got really rough with the field work and the science and career life decisions is that the data point was never worth our life, our health, or our happiness. And to me, that statement encompasses the true strength of Jan's leadership. She cares about the science, but more importantly, she cared about the people behind the science. And to me, that's an extremely valuable trait to have as a mentor and a leader. Um, so Jan, you have been a wonderful mentor, a role model, and a friend. We spent many, many hours in your office as you guided me personally and in my career. And today I'm an independent contractor running um, Benthic Studies, uh, contracting with the state and the federal government, something I just never actually thought was possible. So thank you, Jan, for all you have done for so many of us, and congratulations on this award. Edward, you're not unmuted quite yet. Thank you. All right, sorry. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Ted Summer, former lead scientist of Department of Water Resources. And I had the privilege of uh, having Jan as a colleague throughout my career in California water. But I, I do want to say when I started uh, more than three decades ago, things were a whole lot different. Um, first, to be blunt, it was mostly dudes working in the San Francisco estuary in its watershed. And second, uh, the only critters that most people paid much attention to were fish. Um, and even then, it was really mostly fish that people like to catch or, or catch for sport. Um, and, you know, for all those studies, there really wasn't a whole lot of interdisciplinary or process type work. And finally, uh, although we knew there were all kinds of invasive species uh, in our waterways, we had just a hazy idea of what they were doing out there. And Jan really helped to fix all that. Um, she was, as you've heard, one of the early role models to so many aspiring women scientists. Um, and that's not just in her own agency, but in so many other state, federal, and university uh, forums, and you've heard from some of those folks today. She also uh, really made us pay attention to something other than than fish. And obviously, that's that's critical. Um, and she was also one of the uh, pioneers in really rigorously quantifying the effects of some of the invaders in the estuary and using, as you heard, much more of a process uh, approach. So. Jan, thank you for everything you've done for California water science. Uh, it was such a, a joy having you in my professional cohort. I'm so happy to see you honored in this way. I just thought of you as I passed Phillip Station yesterday driving down from the mountains. Um, and with that, I'd like to pass the mic on to yet another one of Jan's many mentees, uh, my colleague, Karen Gertz. John Bureau, and I'm a USGS scientist studying hydrodynamics in the San Francisco estuary. I have had the great pleasure of working with Jan for over 30 years. Jan clearly meets all of the qualifications for this award. She is a pioneer in her field, a great mentor and communicator. Today I'm going to speak about Jan's leadership in interdisciplinary research. It takes a gifted leader to inspire a group of independent minded scientists from completely different backgrounds and interests, often from different agencies to work toward a mutual goal. As we all know, leadership is not just what you say, but it is what you do. Jan is a natural Renaissance woman who leads by example. For instance, Jan went back to graduate school to study environmental fluid mechanics at Stanford. Her background was in benthic ecology and she had no training in engineering. Who does this? Who could do this? Almost no one, except Jan. In essence, Jan does interdisciplinary research in her head and has had, over the course of her career, 
the ability to bring everyone along with her. Jan, hopefully people today can learn from your legacy of working across disciplines and between agencies to solve problems that are becoming increasingly complex. It's been my great pleasure to work with you. Congratulations on this award. You deserve it. What a great video from John. So we'll see here Betsy's next and then go to Karen. Hi everyone, I'm Betsy Wells, an environmental scientist at the Department of Water Resources, and I'm thrilled to have the chance to say a few words about how Jan's been a mentor to me. I remember when I first started talking to her about 11 years ago about how do we analyze clam data? Um, I remember finishing that first conversation and saying to my husband, I want to be a scientist the way that Jan is a scientist. And at this point today, I know everyone's talked about how Jan's really inspiring by being one of, when she started her career, one of the few women scientists in her area, and how she's got this amazing breadth and depth of scientific achievement. But the things that have really stuck with me are Jan's sense of perspective and proportion. Whenever I talk to her about what's the state of the science, what do we know, she always has this really good sense of this is what we know. This is what we would like to know. This is what it would take to get that additional information. And that, but this is what we could do with it. Um, whenever I've talked to her about historical perspective, she's been she's got a very clear view of how things have changed over the years and how baselines have changed and how they could change again in the future. And it's always been very refreshing. Um, whenever I've been in meetings with her, her personal and interpersonal perspective have also been really important. She always sees people really clearly and understands what they understand and has been really able to communicate science very clearly in that way. Um, I've never known Jan to give unsolicited advice, but I have learned that if I ask for her advice, I should really take it. Um, she keeps being right about things. And the, the other thing I wanted to say about Jan as a mentor is just, she's so kind. She has so much knowledge and has so much gravitas in the field that it, I think it might be very easy to become just the expert. But whenever I've gone to her and asked her questions, she's always taken the time to talk, to educate, to welcome, to encourage. And I've really been the beneficiary of all of that expertise with so much kindness and and meeting me where I was. Um, so congratulations, Jen. Thank you for being who you are and being such a great colleague. And I'm looking forward to working together more. So it's great, Karen. Let's try and hopefully you can close this out for us. No. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry that um, that we can't hear Karen. I was really looking forward to Karen, you sharing your remarks. I'm going to ask Karen, I have them since you sent them to me. Would you like me to read them? I'm seeing thumbs up. Okay, please give me a second. I am going to pull up the remarks Karen shared with me. And so you're going to have to imagine that um, that you are, that I'm Karen talking. So I got have them up, but just can't quite read them waiting for my computer. Okay, so I'm gonna be Karen and speak to these remarks. And I just wanna share, this has been so wonderful hearing from everyone. And I am also really glad to be able to share Karen's remarks because she is another person that went into a management position. So you can see that in addition to the quite a bit of influence in the sciences, Jan has also influenced water resource management um, as well. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen Gertz, and I am an environmental program manager at DWR, program manager two at DWR. It is an honor to speak about Jan, who has profoundly impacted my career by being a mentor to me for over 20 years. When I started, there weren't as many women in science and engineering. So as an early career scientist, the path ahead seemed daunting. But then I met Jan and her experience and guidance helped me. She taught me how to focus my questions, 
told me when my ideas might be a little off track. Meeting Jan initially felt intimidating. She was a towering figure in my mind. Yet over the years, as our relationship evolved from mentorship to friendship, I was privileged to witness her warmth, her unflinching honesty, her profound empathy and vulnerability. It was Jan who showed me that these quote, human qualities do not undermine our ability to lead, rather they enhance it. They foster a culture of collaboration and trust. I recall a moment that encapsulates Jan's extraordinary mentorship. After a particularly challenging meeting, Jan called me, not to critique, but to uplift. She appreciated my handling of the situation, highlighting qualities in me that she admired, even considering them superior to her own in some aspects. Hearing such words from your mentor doesn't just boost your confidence, it transforms you. I have jokingly said I wanted to be Jan when I grew up, to which she responded with a characteristic shake of her head saying, why on earth would you want to do that when you are who you are? That moment, that statement is Jan's philosophy. She never aimed to mold us in her image, she inspired us to become the best versions of ourselves. Let's honor her legacy of leadership and mentorship, but also carry forward her values of honesty, empathy, and the unwavering belief in the potential of every individual. Thank you, Jan, for not just being a mentor, an inspiration, a friend, and a reminder that our most human qualities are perhaps our greatest assets in leadership. So that is from Karen, and uh, what a what a wonderful message to end on. And Karen, I really wish you could have delivered that yourself. So apologies that it didn't work out that way, but I'm so glad that the message came through. And I want to say thank you. Um, please don't go away quite yet because we want to do one last final thing. Um, but I do want to say thank you to everyone that joined today. I want to say thank you to Sabrina Washington for her work to support this event. Wouldn't have happened without you, Sabrina. And, and Jan, um, I am so honored to be able to be part of giving this award to you. And again, thank you to the Phillips family for, for being here and, um, and your partnership with the Department of Water Resources. So um, let's have everyone, if you're comfortable and able, please, Turn on your camera. We're gonna give a wave and a thank you to Jan so you can see all of our faces. Some, you may not even recognize Jan, but we all appreciate you. <laughs> so wave and um, clap. So thank you so much, Jan. I, we are adjourning, but I do wanna say, look for us in 2025. We are going to be continuing this award every year in the month of February or March in honor of Women's History Month. So. Big congratulations. Thank you for being here. And, and Jan will be in touch with you and we will send you the award very soon.